everyone. My name is TJ Mills. I work at Moog Music, and we are here at Moog Fest 2016 in Durham, North Carolina. I'm the team leader for the Voyager line, the Model D line, and the Minotaur line. So and I was wanting to kind of take you guys through the process that, that, that we have at the Moog factory. Basically, we're looking at all of the parts. First, we're, we, we test them, we make sure that all the materials ha are, don't have any cosmetic issues and stuff before we actually use them. Um, we have a company in St. Louis, Missouri named CR Metal that we get all of our metal from and they're doing the aluminum work and they actually do all the, all the metal that we get for our normal products also. So Minotaur, Mogafogers, anything you can think of, even the Voyager chassis, all that, all that metal we get from St. Louis, Missouri. We assemble the, the main front chassis with three pieces of aluminum and then we add the overlay and then we go we move on to installing the main front panels here. So and this is a remake from, from the old. And after the two front panels get installed in the chassis, we then move over to station two. After the installation of the main front PCBs gets done on station one, we then take it to station two. Uh, station two then assembles the left-hand controller. We call it the LHC. We assemble the left-hand controller and then basically it gets, it gets tested and set. Basically it's calibrated before it gets put into the unit. Uh, all the wires, the motherboards, all, all of the daughter boards, all of the boards and all the assembly gets done here on station two. And we also install the main PCB, the last four main PCBs in the unit. And then station two will double check station one's work and then so on and so on. And then once it moves on to me, I am the one who, do, who does the chassis to cabinet marriage and installs the the main keyboard and installs the LHC into the unit. I then make sure that all the cables are routed correctly into the unit so the unit will close correctly. I mount the chassis to the cabinet and do a full functionality test after I flipped it over, put the bottom plate on and calibrated and tested after pressure. Um, once I flip it back over, I then do some of the cosmetic uh, work. I put the knobs on and then I put the um, Put the badge on, mini moog badge. One goes here, one goes on the back. So I install those. We all we actually install those by hand. We don't we don't have any jigs or anything like that. Put those on. We install it by hand. So yeah. and all of this work is done by hand. There's no automation in our factories or whatnot. Uh, the PCBs come from come from different distributors within the USA. Um, and if there was any component that we that we didn't have, it's a uh, old new stock or new old stock. So we were able to get some of the companies that don't make them anymore to remake them for us. The, the first two panels are for the controls. You have, you have all the knobs on the front panels. Then you have your power supply. These are the heat sinks for the power supply. This is where all your main power runs in and it gets distributed throughout the rest of the unit. It gets distributed to, you have your contour board, you have your filter, and then you have your oscillator board. And then these they control the separate parts on the main unit here. So you have your, you know, you have modulation, you have your uh, envelope generator, you have your oscillators and whatnot. So all of these boards, instead of it being put all in just one chip, these are individual, you could think of them as individual chips, you know, that are just hole through components. Mm -hmm. So after we assemble this, I take it and do a full 24 hour burn in and within that 24 hours the unit is left on for 15 minutes shut down for 15 minutes and so on and so on that way we know that the all the components have reached their, have reached their thermal capacity and then they're not going to gain any more heat and basically the magic pink smoke comes out you know we don't want that so um, after burn in for, so a 24 hour burn in it then gets calibrated. It goes through a very rigorous functionality test. We have to double, quadruple check that all of these components work, all the knobs work, all the voltages are right, after pressure is right, velocity, gate, uh, volt per octave. We have to really, really, really make sure that all this is, is set up right because we don't want anyone to get the unit at their house and open it up and then something doesn't work. We have a scope, we have a tuner, and then we have a multimeter, 
and then we have a computer to make sure that MIDI is working. So all of this is, you're, we're, we're tuning um, the volt per octave, so that way, you know, at your C, you, have, you start, it starts from zero and then moves on up to four volts. Um, you have your scope to make sure that your triangle and square, ramp waves, all those waveforms are actually meeting specifications. And then your, your voltage, your voltmeter, you're, you're able to test, see with anything with analog, it's all voltage. So anything that's coming out of the unit or in the unit is voltage. Um, the power supply sends it to the boards, and then the boards, with the, with the resistors, transistors, capacitors, then basically sends that voltage where it needs to go. So for example, after pressure, if you were to, whenever you depress the, the key, after pressure, uh, at its full peak, it will reach 5 volts. Um, the gate is also 5 volts. The um, volt per octave is literally just 0 to 4 volts or to 5 volts and the velocity is to 9 volts. So if you hit the, if you hit the key softly, you know, you're around 0. If you hit it really hard, it'll reach 9 volts. So whenever the CVs are being, you know, whenever the CVs are talking back and forth, that's how they know is just by voltage. And once it gets the full functionality test, once we played it, you know, since a lot of us are musicians here, we will make sure that each unit sounds the same, so we have a visual and an audible reflection. We were able, while we're playing the unit, we can hear with our ears to make sure that it sounds the same as the last unit, and also see with our eyes to make sure that it's doing the same scope reading. At, at MoogFest, we've made 15 so far. Um, there's a lot of interactions with people and stuff like that. Yeah. We've, we've really been enjoying that. It just means a lot to us to have the connection between the customer and us. It fills, it fills the gap there.